most of us do at the beginning of a new year, it's time for some resolutions. And I think 99% of the world actually does that resolution that says, I'm going to eat more healthy, whether it be to lose weight or just because you love yourself and you want to start doing some uh, more healthy things. A lot of people do that. So I thought I'd show you how to make a couple of very quick things that are much healthier than the originals. Uh, and show you how to actually get a little kickstart on that. So even if it only lasts a week, right, which sometimes mine does, uh, at least you'll have some good food this week. And in fact, I think what you'll find is that you'll make things this way going forward, at least every, every once in a while. And what I mean by that is today we're going to make fried rice using cauliflower, and we're going to make cauliflower mashed potatoes. They're mock mashed potatoes. I'm sure you've heard of both. You might have even made both. Um, and I'm going to show you the way that I do it, and perhaps you can uh, use some of the ideas that we have here as well. So, again, cauliflower mashed. I've actually started that. Uh, I have the cauliflower here uh, that I put, I get about a medium head of cauliflower that I actually just put in a little bit of water, and I have that simmering over here. For cauliflower mashed, it needs to be very, very soft. So we're going to let that continue to cook for a second, and we're actually going to do the rice first. And to do the rice, what you're going to need is to create rice. So to do that, you get your head of cauliflower, and you, you put it into florets. You just break it up into the, broccoli, into the little florets like you'd see for broccoli. And you want to get them. You don't want too much of the stem on it, uh, but you definitely want a little bit. And once you have it all cut up into florets, what you're going to do is put it into your food processor. We have a small food processor here that we're using. It holds probably about two or three cups worth of stuff. And as you can tell, if you look at this, I have already gone ahead. Let me move that for you. I've already gone ahead and riced quite a bit of it. And when I say riced, all that means is I put the florets into the food processor. I pulsed it just a bit, and I got until it looked like this, and I was happy. So I'm going to show you how we do that. As you can see, I have filled the bowl with little florets, and I'm going to put the cover on it. And now if you have a larger food processor, you could do a lot more of this at a time than I'm able to do right here. But I'm just going to put it in, and I'm just going to pulse it until it gets to it. It does not take a long time. Give it one little bit more, and that's all there is to it. Now what I've got is beautiful cauliflower rice that I can just put, add right here into my, uh, my bowl. Let me take that out and help it this way. So that's how you get the rice part of it. This is a head of cauliflower. It's actually about a pound and a half or so of florets that I've actually pulled together. Um, you know, but you'll get about this much from, from a head, from a decent sized head of cauliflower. So let's get going. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put on our oven or a stove top here, which I do by, it's this one. And I'm going to put that up. Uh, and I have, I've put a little oil in the pan. It looks like I could use just a bit more. I just want to cover the bottom. And once that begins to uh, shimmer, uh, then it's hot enough. Now we're going to make a pork fried rice. And to make that, what I have here is a couple of cups, maybe it's probably about oh, a half a pound or so, maybe a little bit more, of um, pork, ten, pork roast that I actually sliced up with, by hand, and then I just chunked it, or I just gave, made little slivers of it. And you'll see that a little more clearly. Um, the oil's beginning to simmer here. I'm going to put that right into the pan. And as I break this up, you'll see that I've actually just made little strips with it, so little pieces of pork. So put that all on here, and all we're doing with this is browning. We just want to cook the pork, and see how I have those little bits of it. Don't want to waste any. One thing I like to do as this pork is cooking is add just a little bit of salt and pepper to it. Where'd my salt go? That's what that was. Hold on one second. I have to get my sea salt back. We're going to add a little bit of salt to that. Just like that. And we're going to add a little pepper. Now, 
You can do that at the end if you want to. I always like to season as I go. When you're doing things that take up uh, several steps and several different uh, cooking steps, it's always better to develop those flavors by seasoning each, each uh, layer of it. So this first layer, being the pork, I'm just going to season lightly, which you just saw me do, okay? So once this is cooked, which it is almost there, now mind you, I'm going to use my fingers here and show you. I just cut these into little pork strips. They don't have to be that big, just little strips like that. And I'm just going to brown that up and cook it. And what's happening is on the bottom of the pan now, I'm getting that fond, which is, you know how those little bits stick to it? which do ultimately bring quite a bit of flavor to whatever it is you're cooking. So we have a beautiful amount of cooked pork here. Keep in mind it is going to cook again, so you don't have to get too freaked out whether or not every little last bit of pink is out. When you cut it this small, it's going to be out anyway. So uh, don't worry about that. It really already smells delicious in here, i got to tell you. All right, so I'm good with my pork. Now what I'm going to do is take that and put it aside. I'm going to put that on a plate and let that wait. I'm going to now take a little bit more oil, put it in the pan. To that, I'm going to add a carrot that I have sliced up. I'm going to add that in there. I'm going to add a couple green onions. Probably all those colors and things that you see when you get uh, fried rice from a restaurant. A little bit of fresh garlic chopped in there. And we're just going to saute that up just a few moments and still it be, until it begins to get tender. Probably just two or three minutes. I'm going to turn it down just a hair. I'm going to let that cook. And while that's cooking, let's take a look at our cauliflower for our mashed. What we're looking for it to be here is really soft. And I can tell. You saw how quickly and easily that went in. There was no effort. That is good to go. Right now I'm just going to shut off that burner. And in a moment we will drain it. But for now we know it's ready to go. And we're going to continue that on uh, in just a minute and turn that beautiful thing into mashed potatoes. Very healthy and delicious mashed potatoes. All right, so these are looking good. So we've got that again, just the carrots, a little bit of garlic, the brown bits from the bottom of the pan. I'm scraping up a little bit as I'm doing this, so that brings more flavor to it. And now, after that, over here, right, we have left to add here is the rice. We have some peas and we have some egg. So right now to these veggies I'm going to add the rice. So here it goes right in the pan. And I want that to just cook slightly. Now as you can imagine because this is so now a, a small um, uh, size it cooks very quickly. It's really just a matter of a quick saute with this. Nothing too exciting. Let's put that um, up just a touch. Really all you're doing is you're kind of uh, incorporating it with the veggies and the flavor uh, from the pan. That's all we're really doing here. So again, while that's cooking for one second, I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to take this over to the stove and drain these just by using the pan cover. We don't have to do anything too special. Let me just drain this out and get it ready. And there we go. Now one of the things you will find when you're making cauliflower mashed potatoes is that the drier the better for your cauliflower. So I'm going to let that sit for another little bit and in fact um, uh, a little of the water will drain down to the bottom of the pan again and we will uh, drain out any more water that happens to come from it. So it is, uh, it's, if you don't drain it enough then your, your potatoes are going to be a little watery. So you just want to be careful with that. 
All right, so look, you can see this rice. It's simply, all you're trying to get to is a little bit of it to start to get a little golden. And you'll notice, I pretty much stirred it the whole time. And I did that because I just didn't want it to, of course, burn, right? I can't help but shake pans when I cook. Okay. And that's looking very, very good here. And then we have a couple things left, as I mentioned. We have some fresh peas. Actually, I'm lying to you, they were frozen. Um, you can use frozen peas. What you'll want to do with them is cook them first and then just have them ready to go. Um, the pork we've already cooked. And what we have here is just some beaten eggs, two eggs. And all we're going to do with that is once it's almost ready to go, we're going to move this over to the side of the pan. We're going to put the eggs over to the other side, scramble them up a bit, and then incorporate that all together. And we'll do that at that time. We'll also add some soy sauce to it and we'll be good to go, okay? And then I'll just let it simmer, or I should say just sit there and cook, uh, or keep warm, while we make the mashed. All right. Okay, that's starting to look really good. And you can see it's just starting to turn a different shade, right? Just getting a little bit of the goldenness in some of these, you can tell. So at this point, I'm going to add this pork back to it. Put that right in. You can hear that sizzle. Everybody's happy it just arrived. We'll put that there. And we're going to move that around. And look at how much that made, by the way. You could do an entire meal of just this. I'm sure we've all had just fried rice for dinner before. This, you could add any kind of meat or vegetable you'd like. We're going to add the peas to it now. If you don't want that many, you don't have to have them. If you're not a pea fan, then by all means leave them out. But if you want to do the traditional things that you generally find, this is, you want to add it in. Okay, so now I'm going to give it a little bit of soy sauce, or actually quite a lot of bit of soy sauce. Let me uh, make a, here we go, that's what I want. We'll see how much. I'm going to give it a couple of tablespoons at least. All right, so we're going to bring that around. We're going to put a little more in. Yes, I know I'm going over. And even a little more. And this, by the way, is completely up to you how much you want. I would do at least a couple of tablespoons to begin with. Um, and if you want more, you can always add more. Uh, I don't think you'll want less. Um, you really need at least a couple of tablespoons to get that flavor, that, uh, you know, that Asian flavor that you're looking for here. Okay? Ah, you can hear it's even quieting down automatically. It's saying, hey, I'm almost done here. And while that continues to simmer, I think you can see the pretty colors in that. Looks just beautiful. And then the last step, I suppose I could add the rest of these peas. Not going to hurt anybody. The last step is to make the eggs. So to do that, you are just going to slide, just push most of that over to one little side of the pan. Because what you're trying to do is create a little uh, space on the pan where you can scramble the eggs, right? So I'm adding the eggs to that side of the pan, which we have just freed up. I'm going to pour them right in. And I'm going to just scramble them over here while the rest of that sits off to the side. And that doesn't take too long. And you've probably all realized when you get, um, or you, maybe you didn't realize, but now you'll look for it. When you get fried rice, there's always scrambled egg in it. It helps bind it together. It also gives it, obviously, flavor. It gives it a little bit of a different texture for pieces of it. Um, it's all around adds quite a bit to it, not to mention protein. So if you are trying to stay away from uh, meat, you can use that for your protein. Uh, again, you can add anything. You can add a little celery to this. You can add some peppers. You, the, the really, it's completely up to you. 
All right, I don't know if you can see that or not, but we've got the scrambled egg pretty well scrambled here. It's gonna let that dry even a little bit more. And then I'm gonna incorporate that all into the rest of it. So you can see we have that scrambled bits. Now we're gonna put it back together and start stirring that all. Whoa, and making a mess, because that's what I do here on the show, you know that. All right. And there we have cauliflower rice. Now, how delicious does that look? That is a meal in and of itself. Think about that. You could make, uh, let's say you're making yourself tacos one night, or you, want, you have some other thing you want to do. You have some chicken wings you'd like to cook. Um, this is a wonderful, and how quick did that happen, right? It's a wonderful accompaniment to all of those things. You can even use it just as a side for any dish you might be having yourself, whether you're just making some grilled chicken or, or, uh, or even burgers for that matter. Instead of french fries, you want to go a little more healthy, this is the way to go. So, we are done with our cauliflower rice. The only thing we have left to do, which we'll do in a little bit, is to taste it. And at that point, we'll decide if we want a little more soy sauce or if we don't. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that just sit tight. Uh, we're going to let that sit until we actually finish the mashed potatoes. So I'm going to clean up this just a bit, going to get us ready. I'll show you how we make these mashed potatoes. And then in just a few minutes, we're going to give everything a try. See you in a sec. Hello and welcome again. We are now ready to actually finish up our uh, mashed potatoes. Let me shut this off. I've actually already drained this, so we are good to go here. Uh, you saw me drain it actually in the last uh, segment. And what I'm doing here is I just was heating that up just a bit, cause, just because we sat here for a second and I want to make sure that it was nice and warm. So. The way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to make uh, mashed potatoes using a very traditional thing called a ricer, right? So we're going to take this, and all you have to do is move our pan over. We're going to spoon that cauliflower right into it. Let me do it like that. And we spoon in, we fill up the bowl, and you can see you've probably seen one of these. Your grandmother probably had one, your mom might have, and all you do then is take it. Normally this would be potatoes you're doing it with and you're just going to make that, uh, force that right through those little holes. That's all it takes. And remember I told you that, um, you know, when you are making cauliflower mashed, you want to make sure it's as drained as possible. You can see as I did that, there was some water that was released. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mash this all through the ricer, and then I'm going to try to pour out just a little bit of that water that came from it. Woo, look at that. It's all even squishing out. So we'll just pour that off to the side, which slowly close that up. And what we're going to have is beautifully smooth um, cauliflower mashed right here. Now, if you've never seen one of those, these, this is um, how we used to make mashed potatoes back in the old days. Uh, and then sometimes now, too, if you have a small batch, it's a wonderful way to do it. So I highly recommend you getting a rice surf. In fact, you don't have one. You can get them just about anywhere. They still are, are very popular today. It's just that most people don't use theirs. It's kind of like hand blenders, you know. You have that in the back of your uh, uh, cabinet somewhere and very seldom use it. But they're excellent. All right, so you can see how that is all nice and smooth. I'm taking my spatula. We're going to clean the edges off, okay? We're gonna clean the bottom off. You can probably see why it's called a ricer because as it, um, uh, you know, squishes it down through those little holes, it looks like rice, all right? So, all right, I'm gonna put that back here to hold it. Move that aside. As I said, there's quite a bit of water in here. I'm just going to come over this section for a second, over to the sink, get rid of a little of that. I don't want too much. So I'm just giving that a little bit of a drain. 
so that our mashed potatoes are nice and fluffy and not too wet. All right, so there's our potatoes. What are we gonna add to this? Just a couple of things. We're gonna add about an ounce or so of cream cheese we have right here. There's about a tablespoon of butter. We're gonna add those in. I'm also going to add in just a couple tablespoons of sour cream. I'm gonna add, of course, because I'm Italian and I can't help myself, I'm gonna add some Parmesan cheese, which actually really does make a big difference. So definitely add the Parmesan. It's not too much, so you don't have to worry um, that you're being bad, given we are talking healthy eating. Uh, this is a little sea salt I'm just sprinkling on. Let's give it a little pepper. And then we're gonna give it a mix. The heat from the uh, cauliflower will easily melt your butter and your cream cheese, but you can break it up just a little bit as you're doing it. Okay. That's all we're doing to it. We'll break that up, let the heat melt it. And you might say, well, what are those other things in front of her in the dishes? We have a little cream right here. I will, would only use that if it seemed like it needed it. And this does not seem like it needs it. It looks like it's got the right consistency. So I'm not going to use that cream. I'm just going to let that sit there. And then the last thing I have here is some uh, green onions. Uh, you can use chives, you can use green onions. You don't have to use anything if you don't want to. But all I do with that is at the end of the day, uh, I'll just use that as a little garnish on top. So let's give it a little taste, see if it needs anything else. You can see all that cream cheese is melted now. Let me bring that a little closer to me. All that cream cheese is melted. The butter has melted, the Parmesan cheese is incorporated. All of that is ready to go. And now what we have is very healthy, or at least much more healthy, mashed potatoes. All right, I think it's time to taste. Let me give, uh, let me get a little dish here. And what, no, not only are we gonna try the mashed, we're gonna try the fried rice. So here we are, have our rice here ready to go. And that's still nice and hot. We just had that sitting on a warm burner. Okay, so I'm gonna take a dish. I'm gonna put a little bit of that rice on there just to give it a little taste. Again, at this point you get to decide, geez, that needs a little more soy, or this might need a little more salt, whatever it is uh, that you need to worry about. For now, I'm just gonna go with it. So let's try the, the mashed first. Okay, see, I actually like these better than mashed potatoes. They actually have a lot more flavor. Maybe it's the cheese, who knows? But they're very, very good. And they, you know, you have that same consistency as mashed potatoes, so you don't really even know that you're not having it. Now, of course, people are going to know, but I, I defy them to tell you that they don't enjoy these just as much, if not more. So give it a shot for sure. Mm. Those are really good. I don't think it needs more salt. You would just take it. You would throw a little of the green onions on top if you were plating them for people uh, and do it that way. As far as the cauliflower rice goes, there's a nice amount of pork in here, so I get to have uh, my protein. Mm. Okay. And that is really good. That absolutely hits the spot. It tastes nice and fresh. Um, not like, you know, they've had to pack it into a a container, um, it tastes nice and fresh and light. I really, I know you're going to love this. I could probably use a little bit more soy on this, um, but that's because I like that saltiness. So if you'd like that, add it. And if not, this'll do just fabulous. So let me try one more. Oh, that is good. And it's lunchtime, so I'm a happy girl. So there you have it. Very easy, two of the most popular cauliflower dishes to make out there. It takes very little time. And all you need is your cauliflower, a few vegetables, and of course, a lot of love, which we got plenty of here. So thank you again for joining us. I do hope you have a wonderful 2018 and all of your dreams come true. We'll see you soon at the next episode of Cooking with Love.